but you need to show up. Like you need to do the work, you need to support people, you need to live your life in, in a way that's actually like, how can I make this room better? How can I improve this person's life? How can I improve my own life? You know, if you consistently do that, I think inevitably success, in air quotes, just inevitably manifests itself. Welcome to the Model Health Show. This is fitness and nutrition expert Sean Stevenson, and I'm so grateful for you tuning in with me today. Very pumped about this episode. We're talking about the impact that COVID-19 has had on our movement, our exercise practices, and sedentary behavior here in the United States. And I just got my hands on some early data that was tracking the behavior of our kids pre-COVID, the physical activity and sedentary behavior and what's happened in the early, just looking at the early stages of COVID and the shutdowns and the quarantines. And things have progressively uh, kind of increased as far as children in their screen times, officially having many schools shut down and a lot of children doing their learning through screens. So we already know on the surface that the levels of sedentary behavior have skyrocketed. That's what the data confirmed. It confirmed what we could already know just by taking a meta perspective. And also the levels of exercise have decreased. So sedentary behavior up, exercise down. And the study, and this was published in BMC Public Health, what the researchers discovered was that these current changes in physical activity and sedentary behavior in reaction to COVID-19 are looking like they're having a tendency towards becoming permanently entrenched, leading to increased risk of obesity, diabetes, and cardiovascular disease in children. What are we doing? What are we doing to our children and ourselves, of course? You know, we really need to look at what are some of the things, what's happening right now, really get face to face with the issue, and what can we do moving forward to improve upon this? Because what you're gonna learn today is that there's a solution. Movement is accessible. There's access, there's movement opportunities all around us, but we really need to have something to engage it. We need to have something to spark that desire because our lives are so different right now. For a lot of folks, the gym has been their sanctuary. It's been a part of their lives and having that kind of pulled away has led to a reduction in activity in and of itself and just getting out and being in the world and going to work and those different things. But you know, for many of us, we see exercise and movement through the lens of lifting weights exclusively, you know? And there's a wonderful thing about weights, you know, weights, can provide the opportunity for, you know, for strength training in an interesting way where we build more muscle and we know that muscle is our body's kind of fat burning machinery. It's so metabolically expensive to carry in your body. You're burning more calories than the fella next to you who doesn't lift, right? So do you lift, bro? Right, so that's one interesting dynamic, but that work takes time. It's, it becomes a practice. Many people who fall in love with the weights, it's become a part of their life. But for some folks, it's just not their thing. Right? When they're lifting weights and they're not seeing the results right away, they don't understand they're called weights because you have to wait. You got to put the reps in. You got to continuously do the thing. And that's what we're going to talk about today is what are these simple things that we do incrementally that don't take up a lot of time, that doesn't have to be fancy, that we can add to our practices and become more human to enjoy more movement and also to share these things with our friends and family because our children are suffering. Right now, we're creating a culture. We're literally in training our children with very deep-seated beliefs right now that we don't even understand the ramifications that come. So we have to take it upon ourselves to make sure that we are employing as much healthy, safe movement as we possibly can. But what you're gonna learn today, and we've got one of the foremost experts in the world to talk about this subject, is that it's a matter of something we have control of. It's a matter of shifts in our environment. So can't wait to have this conversation. But something else really important that I wanna let you know about is that I've been working the past couple of years on a very, very powerful project to help to really revolutionize our connection with food, our connection with each other, and really help to put a big dent in and even potentially end our epidemics of heart disease and obesity and Alzheimer's and these conditions that have continued to skyrocket 
because there are solutions for these things. And there are wonderful, powerful things that we already know, but the access to this information, there's so many barriers to it. You know, there's a lot of just dry science. And so that's what I really strive to do here with the Model Health Show is making the complexity of some of these studies very attainable and easy to understand and even enjoyable and just sparking that interest and desire to learn. And there's something very powerful and even a virility to the nature of a book. You know, right now in our very kind of social media dominant thinking, stuff is just here today, gone today. We're scrolling, scrolling, but a book has this very powerful transformative staying power, especially when it's a, a, a book that's rich in transformative information. And so that's what I've been working on. And the new book is called Eat Smarter. And this book is addressing number one, how to actually empower people in understanding how our metabolism actually works. What are the key nutrients and foods that are involved in the enzymatic processes, the hormone processes that really drive our metabolism? And what are the things that truly create these hormonal blocks? And bringing these things to the forefront so that we can understand this, we can use it for change. And so that's part of the book, but one of the most important parts of the book for me, and that's been the most powerful, is the sections looking at how our food affects our cognition, how it affects our emotional stability, and how it affects how we relate to each other. And the science is going to blow your mind. And right now, when you pre-order the book, you're going to get a very special mini course that I put together. And this is a really true value-packed mini course. And it's the 10 foods that are clinically proven to optimize your fat loss hormones. And you can get that right now for free when you pre-order Eat Smarter. Just go to eatsmarterbook.com, pre-order the book, be a part of this movement, get access to the free mini course. It's a $97 value for the mini course that you get for free. Please do that right now. We need to create change in our world and food is a big part of the solution. So pop over there, eatsmarterbook.com and pre-order your copy right now. And just within the context of foods that have a powerful influence on our metabolism, in a recent conversation we had with Dr. Kate Shanahan, she reiterated a very powerful fact that I want us to really get. I really want us to understand this. In taking biopsies from humans about 100 years ago, the content of our body fat, so a biopsy literally seeing what are the fat cells made of, the content of our fat cells themselves around two to 4% polyunsaturated fatty acids, or PUFAs, right? PUFA, PUFA, puffy, right? Naturally occurring in many foods. However, today we have so much of these polyunsaturated fatty acids from these very highly processed seed oils that are used to make processed foods that people have been indoctrinated with this idea that it's a good idea to cook with them. You know, the canola oils and the quote vegetable oils that are not made from vegetables, by the way, it's marketing. Now today, taking biopsies from human fat cells, we went from two to 4% PUFAs making up our fat cells to upwards of 30% of human fat cells being made of these highly unstable polyunsaturated fatty acids. The very nature of human fat has changed. The ingredients that make up the human body has changed rapidly just within this small time frame. What do you think that means for us as humans when you change the ingredients that go into making a human? We're coming out with a totally different recipe and wondering why we're battling so hard to figure out our problems with our metabolism. It's the very stuff that we're making ourselves out of. So uh, I just wanna encourage us to start to think about the fuels we're taking in, what we're making ourselves out of. And in the lane of fat loss, listen to this, there was a study that was published in the European Journal of Clinical Nutrition, and it found that the inclusion of as little as 15 grams of median chain fatty acids, right? so MCTs, medium chain triglycerides per day, was enough to boost study participants' rate of calorie burn by 5%. Now what this study is showing us is that simply paying attention to the oils that we're bringing into our body, these oils make a huge impact. Your body does a lot of different processes utilizing the oils that we bring in through our diet. And so I get in MCTs every single day. One of my all-time favorite sources of that is an emulsified MCT oil from Onnit. And I love it because number one, it's easy to mix so you can easily add it to you know, smoothies, teas, coffees, things like that. It tastes amazing. 
when you get these benefits of these medium chain triglycerides, it's really remarkable, it has dynamic impacts on our metabolism. This is just one of the ways that it affects our metabolism, but it's very easily assimilated by the body, bypassing normal digestion and being used really as instant energy. Now it's essential for us to understand that these MCTs, these medium chain triglycerides, would be a natural part of our food intake throughout history. But as we kind of moved away from natural foods and more into the processed food realm, these MCTs are not a big part of our diet anymore. So getting access to incredible resources like this is just really a game changer, super valuable. I have the MCT oil every single day, highly recommended. Pop over there, check them out. It's onit.com forward slash model. That's O-N-N-I-T dot com forward slash model. Get 10% off everything that they carry. And on that note, let's get to the Apple Podcast Review of the Week. Another five-star review titled Personal Training Knowledge by SE Craven 23. I absolutely love this podcast. As a personal fitness coach, I am fascinated with all the knowledge Sean has to offer. I feel like I've learned more from Sean and this podcast than I have from all my undergrad schooling, as well as my training and certification from the National Federation of Personal Trainers. I have been able to offer more help and knowledge to my clients because of Sean. Thank you. That's so incredibly powerful. Thank you so much for sharing that. And that's what it's all about is paying it forward. You know, taking this information in all of us and imbibing it, making it a part of who we are, being the model ourselves. And of course, being able to share this with the people that we care about, you know, planting seeds, getting on our Johnny apple seed and planting seeds wherever we can, because we never know whose life we can impact. We never know how those seeds are going to sprout and the changes that we can make. I'm here as a result of somebody planting seeds. My mother-in-law, she took the opportunity to share some things with me that changed my life. And so take every opportunity you can to teach and to pay it forward. And I appreciate this so much. If you had to do so, pop over to Apple Podcasts and leave a review for the show. And now to our special guest and topic of the day. Our guest today is Aaron Alexander, and he's a movement coach and therapist who's helped the world's best athletes, celebrities, and everyone in between to relieve pain, increase strength, and optimize their movement. He's also the author of the best-selling book, The Align Method, and he has an incredible podcast as well. He's just making such an impact right now in helping us to reconnect and remember how important it is to implement movement in new and dynamic ways in our lives. So really pumped about this conversation. So let's jump into this interview with Aaron Alexander. You got the sexy Voss bottle. Yeah, it's actually just some bullshit water replaced in, in Voss, very LA of me. Hey, the bottle though. It's, the know, bottle. it's, all, that, about, it's all about the bottle. It looks like you, you're getting a, a uh, check cash at the bank. It, it also it, like it also doubles too. as like a little myofascial release tool. See, man, you're so innovative. I you're find like, myself typically doing any kind of interviews, especially if it's like a Skype thing. Uh -huh. I'll get like a little ball and I'll kind of roll out my joints and roll out my wrists and kind of stack stack some variables. Mm. You're like the MacGyver of <laughs> you know. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> or MacGruber. <laughs> MacGruber. You know, either one. Yeah, I don't know that reference either. SNL? MacGruber? MacGruber! No, I didn't, I didn't see that. Yeah. I need, I've, I need I've more never time actually seen, I've never actually seen any of the skits, uh. but I just know of it. I know it became a movie. MacGruber. Magru MacGruber! Uh, you gotta say it like that. I'll, I'll look at it. You asked me, do I sing? <laughs> yeah! <laughs> Sean Stevenson. Listen, man, I'm so glad that you're here. I'm so glad that everything aligned. You were the aligned king, you know. And, um, but dude, the world is out of alignment right now. You know, we, well, that's what we see on the surface. So first of all, how, what do we do, man? We're out of alignment. How do you see this through, through your filter, through your lens, your experience, your professional perspective? Um, you know, so many people since this whole thing began, we've gotten further away from our core of humanity and movement. You know, we were already a sedentary population. Now it's just double down on that. So um, how, do we, how do we get back in alignment? Like what, from your perspective, what's not in alignment right now and what do we need to do to get back? To? Well, I think the first thing, thanks so much for making time to do this. Uh, and then the, the first thing after, after the first thing is that our perceptions color the world. And so before this, we were talking about antennas and tuning into channels and frequencies and like, are you in resting face channel or are you in hunched, in, hunched over 
addicted to your cell phone channel? Are you in confident, strong, king of the world channel? Like what channel are you tuned into? You know, and so I think if you're coming in from the channel of, you know, the world is chaos and it's all polarized and the social dilemma and everyone's, you know, civil war and we're inside too much and, you know, it's like the whole world's against us. If we come from that perspective, it's kind of like there's a, a term, the Pygmalion effect. Familiar with this? You ever heard of this? This comes from like an ancient Greek myth. Uh, the Pygmalion effect, essentially, Pygmalion was a, a sculptor. And so he was sculpting these, these various different statues out of, out of marble. And then uh, he got a, I'm probably butchering this, this story, so please like research Pygmalion effect or who Pygmalion was. But he got a, a wish from, his, from the goddess. And it was like, okay, you have one wish. It's like a special holiday. And he was like, I'd like to have a, uh, a woman in the light of my, my uh, the light and the essence of my, my sculpture. And she's like, okay, we got it. And the sculpture comes to life. You know, so he, he, he put all this work into forming and creating and visualizing this sculpture. And then eventually the sculpture became his reality. You know, so I think that a starting point is, is coming from a place of like, where can I find compassion for what's going on? Where can I find compassion for that person that's pro this political side, pro Trump, pro Biden, pro mass, pro no mass, pro BLM, pro, you know, whatever their perspective is be able to see like what is the echo chamber that that person comes from, what are the stories that they've been told, you know, and how can I start to come from more of a place of like, okay, like I can kind of start to put myself into your shoes so now I don't have this like otherness and this separation and this distance between me and you. It's more this sensation of like, oh, like I get it. You know, and if you can come from that place, I think from there we can start to actually have a meaningful conversation. And then also, you know, so that's more like a, a political thing, which I, I don't think it's wise to get into, but uh, from just like a purely physical, biological perspective, your perspectives, that, that filter that you perceive the world from, shapes the production of cortisol and uh, adrenaline and, you know, the way that your body goes through the, the HPA access. You know, like originally, our bodies are, you know, they're built to move. That's why we have a brain. You know, and so when you go through the world, and, uh, you know, there's, we were talking before, like the, the idea that's like, essentially we, we move to eat and we eat to move. And that's, we just kind of do that on repeat, ultimately to survive and uh, create new, you know, continue the species, et cetera. Uh, but we've kind of switched over into more of this place of just like eating, sitting, eating, mm. sitting. You know, when a person gets stressed, that stress is an indicator that it's time to move. You know, so, so this is a really big deal. You know, so you're all set up that when you're moving, it means something important is happening. When you're still, it means, okay, cool, it's time to chill. Nothing that important of that, like, high relevance is happening right now. I'm resting, you know, maybe I'm, like, whittling some fibers together or something, but I'm kind of just even still I'm moving at that point. You know, whereas when you're moving, it's like, okay, something's happening. So your brain comes online. You know, and your whole neurophysiology and your hormones and everything, it kind of starts to show up for you and says, okay, well, like, we, need to, we need to be here for this. There's something going on. You know, and so when you get stressed and your body goes through that whole HPA access and all the things that you're already familiar with and your audience is probably familiar with, you know, your body's producing this chemistry in order to get you to get up and at them. You know, so there's a line in the room. All of a sudden they go, oh, my God, the cortisol and the adrenalines and norepinephrine and all the things. Get out of the room. Fight, flight, make the thing. Now, instead of that stress, which could just be a story of the world, mm -hmm. translating into you making action and moving and getting out there and, and getting something done and being able to work that physiology out, now it's just I'm, I'm plastered into my couch, feeding more and more stress signals into my body, starting to back up and back up and back up. You know, and so what happens with a person that has a lot of you know, stress hormones going and excessive amounts of cortisol, you know, that's associated with visceral fat, you know, that's associated with degeneration of the brain and the hippocampus. And, you know, so when the body's chronically under that stress state, you know, the, the, the system begins to deteriorate, deteriorate, you know, and so when you get those little, those little punches of stress, it's sweet. It means time to wake up. It means time to run away. It means time to protect. It means time to build. It means there's a storm coming. I need to move and build my shelter. 
and we can work kind of like massage those stress hormones out. You know, so ultimately I think is there's multiple conversations. One, what is your perception of the world? Do you feel safe? Do you feel home? Do you feel loved? Do you feel a part of something meaningful? You know, and then the next portion into that is, uh, you know, are you moving your physiology? Because if you're not, it will back up like a dam. Man, this is profound. <laughs> this is profound. Like I, when you said the line in the room and our, our hard wiring, the way that we've evolved to operate is compelling us to move. And that line in the room could be that political candidate on your television. Yeah. It could be that news report of, you know, this particular, you know, protest going on or the news report about this particular death count. It's the line in the room. And we just sit there and, and ruminate on it and, 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 and absorb more. Or we try to dis distract ourselves with more sitting yeah. and Netflix. Like, let me, let me get that out of my head. Let me watch some, you know, how to get away with murder. Yeah. You know, and what you said today has already has inspired me so much because if you just look at, you know, look at animals in nature, we are, we are an animal, we're part of nature, but of course we've separated ourselves so much from it. They shake that shit off. When something traumatic happens, you gotta, you shake it off physically, shake it off, move in the body, then you rest when things are cool, when you're cool. Yeah. Other than that, you're, the natural response is to move to to get that to 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 get yourself into a place of safety to try to move around fix the problem whether you're not you're actually fixing something today but just getting out and going for a walk or going for a hike or changing your environment moving your body is going to help to bring you back to a more centered aligned space yeah and that's an, and so they'll, they'll they'll go through that kind of like tremorous cathartic release, say a zebra, you know, just escaped the, the clenches of a, of a lion out in Kenya. Uh, and the, but what they'll do with that is they'll, you know, they'll find a, a, a safe, shady place to purge that stress. You know, so in relation to like your history that I'm sure you've shared quite a bit on this, on this, this show, um, if you don't have the resources uh, which could just be a story. Ultimately, everything is a story. Like, what's your perception of this place? You know, Viktor Frankl, Man's Search for Meaning, he was able to find this sense of, I mean, I don't know how home he felt exactly in the concentration camps, but in his books, he seemed to at least find meaning in all of that. You know, so it, the story of Viktor Frankl in that, like, about as heinous of a situation as you could possibly think of. You know, in the United States, it's like if, if you know, the, the wrong president gets elected, people go and they have grieving stations and, you know, it's like the schools shut down for a day and all that stuff. Like people from countries that are actually going through some real shit would be like, it's a little soft. <laughs> you know, like, like, like Victor Frankl would probably be like, really? A grieving station? You know, like, we, we, like we've gone through some real things and our perception paints, you know, our reality in, in a big way. You know, and so I think it's like figuring out, one, what are the, the literal brick and mortar uh, environmental conditions that you exist in that induce the sensation of safety? You know, so perhaps that could be conversations you've already had a lot being like maybe you're bombarded by blue lights at the wrong times of the day. You know, before you go to bed, you've got your cell phone, your TV, and all the things that you've already talked about ad nauseum, so I'm not going to go into. Um, you know, it could be the, the shape of your furniture is forming your body into a more defensive position. You know, so that's where it gets a little bit weirder to think like, oh my God, like my body, I'm continually sending signals to other people of the way that I feel and the way that I think and you know, what my, my present state. If I'm scared, suddenly the lines in the room, I'm like, <gasps> I might clench my jaw a little bit, TMJD. You know, I might you know, contract my shoulders up and I might do a little bit more of like, my spine might go into this hyperkyphotic type like dowager's hump type position, which I'm literally like, I'm like protecting my vital organs, right? So that's a, a, a deep mammalian reptilian defensive expression of I need to go into protection. You know, and so when you're in that protective space, uh, it's a super valuable position to be in. Uh, you just wouldn't want to live your whole entire life in a position of 
defense, protect, scarcity. You know, it's I got to get mine. I got to pull it in. You know, and you see that even with people within relation to like like your upcoming book. I'm um, getting into kind of like the psychology of eating and such, and how we choose the food that we eat. I think a, a major portion of what we eat is based off of our, our 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 identity structure, who we believe we are. You know, you a person that is like, you know what, like, I'm not really worth regenerative farmed you know, meat or some bone broth or some t organic vegetables or something. like, I'm, it's like, it's a little expensive. I'm not really that guy. You know, I'm, I'm more of like a, you know, Twinkies and kind of maybe fish filet or whatever. Like, I'm, that's, I feel like that's kind of more, that's where I'm at. You know, so until you start to change that structure, that belief system, the story that you run about yourself, it's going to be very challenging for you to start to veer into a different nutritional program. Uh, it'll also be very challenging for you to change, to veer into a different postural um, place. You know, so, and then within that, your posture is feeding back. Just when we're sitting having this conversation, to be more granular about it, we're sitting having this conversation, you're continually taking my body patterns in, right? So if I'm gesticulating with my hands, my hands are open and all that stuff, like when we shake hands, we're checking to see if we have weapons. You know, when you wave, I'm saying, I don't, I'm not here to hurt you. Here, ha, 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 I'm body languaging to you that I'm not here to hurt you. I'm communicating to you with my appendages and with the tone of my voice and the pacing of my language. Like, that's how we actually communicate. A very small percentage of our communication is the actual literal words. The vast majority is, uh, you know, through body language and, and the tone of our voice. You know, and so it's like, okay, cool, most people can buy that. If you're a sensitive person at all or have any, any degree of success in your life and in, in business and relationships, you're probably somewhat of a body language expert and you may or may not realize it. So, cool, most people can buy that. You know, so what about the reciprocal of that? You know, so if we invert that equation and say, okay, what's the story that I am telling to myself through my body language? You know, and that gets into, there's all sorts of research from all over the place. I know you love research. There's like research from San Francisco State University. They took uh, different groups of, of, of students. They put one group into this kind of like hunched over, you know, in the, in the Align Method book. My book, I, I, I call that the mopey posture and kind of just like the deflated flat, like, oh, you know, i.e. just like hunching over, staring into my phone on the sofa. Um, you know, and then they had that group think into different memories and then they had another group go into what I would call the aligned position which is just like an upright strong stacked tadasana essentially in yoga talk like you just your joints are aligned tada tada yeah uh, the people in the mopey posture it's easier for them to access memories that are more depressive so your physical posture is literally anatomically depressed than your the antenna the way that you perceive the world and the way that people perceive you starts to become a little bit more closed, defense, defensive, depressed. No moralistic good, bad judgment, just that's the language. And then you can go over to the other side, more open, aligned, stacked, well-oriented, centrated, integrated, you know, dynamic, all of those words. That body is expressing something very different. And in the San Francisco state, uh, research, what they found is those people were able to access more what they would deem as like uplifting positive memories. You know, and the reason for that I would, I would pose is because we're continually anchoring postural patterns to felt states and felt emotions. So throughout your history, forever and ever and ever, ever since you're a little baby, you know, if you wanted to protect, you go, ah, everything's contract. Right, shoulders go up, your sphincters clench, ah! you know, and then when you're happy, you go, ah! you open up like a, like a lotus flower, like your, the, the blossom comes open, just brings it in. So every time throughout your history, and this goes, you know, ancestral, winds back, you know, millennia, but just in this physical body history, every time you felt good and you wanted to bring the world in, you go, oh, shoulders come back. You know, the, you start to come into this, like your diaphragm drops, your breath comes into your abdomen. You're just like, oh yeah, I'm home. And then scary time, I contract. So now when you start to kind of parse that apart, when, you're, when you take on that position, it starts to invoke a certain sensation. You know, so 
I don't remember what the question was exactly, but I think that's interesting. <laughs> man, this is, this is so good because one of the things that you brought up there, man, this is really profound, but one of the things you brought up was identity is tied to how we, how we move, but also you know, our perception of the foods we choose to eat. Yeah. That's something I've done work on as well. Uh, for folks, and you know, like you said, there's there are certain kind of uh, prototypes, but we're so dynamic as human beings. You know, I liken it to like a, a snowflake, you know, a metabolic snowflake. Yeah. But this is, I, I think that we tend to. I love the idea of working from both directions, but we tend to just work from the symptom treatment. Yeah. So I want to talk about that identity piece a little bit more, because. What we tend to do, and I've said this statement many times, but the, the number one driving force of the human psyche is to stay congruent with the ideas that we carry of ourselves. Mm -hmm. So however we perceive ourselves to be is how we are continuously analyzing the world, reacting, moving, everything about us is based on our perception of who we are. And if we could change that, but part of the issue is that we are comfortable with who we are, even if we're not happy. We're comfortable with it. Yeah, we haven't died in that state yet. And so when we try to move, and we want change, but we still try to remain the same, that's where a lot of the tension and turbulence, the, the discomfort happens, is when you're changing your identity. But once you do that, once you change the identity, it makes it automatic, you know? So I wanna talk about that because you changed your identity to be the person that you are. You know, you wear flexible pants because you're gonna move. <laughs> You know what I mean? <laughs> at, at any time, at any given moment, because you're compelled to do it, but you had a shift in your identity and your body loves you for it. Mm. What brought about that shift in identity for you and how can we kind of employ some of that for ourselves to shift our identity right now to really we, where we need movement more than ever? Yeah. There's like a, a quote that comes to mind is the Winston Churchill, Churchill and it's our first we shape our buildings and then our buildings begin to shape us. You know, so I think that in your home, you know, we're in your beautiful home, it's very open, it's very light colors, there's space to get around and play and move on the ground. I see some like toys for your kids to play with. You know, it's like very like, it feels very open and, 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 and free and you know, you could probably, it might, if someone stayed here, they might all of a sudden be compelled to like paint or <laughs> you know, or there, a lot of singing does happen in this exactly. House too. Or maybe you like yeah. will do a little dance. You probably have. I bet oh. you have a decent sound oh. system someplace. You know, or at least yeah. have like some speakers that are creating yeah. something that'll get kind of the hips wiggling Constantly a little bit. Dancing too, yeah. Yeah, you know. So it's that's so funny. I never thought about that before. Yeah, that's wow. a, yeah. I mean, that's a, I did several chapters in in the book of you know aligning your home, aligning your office, aligning your your uh, travel. You know, because all of those are opportunities to tap into to Churchill's statement of, you know, first you come into this blank slate, you know, and, you, and you, you're the, the lord of the house and you're shaping it. Wow. And then you spend some time in there and it starts to reflect back on you. You know, so something that I would start to tinker with would be uh, not looking for such grandiose changes because, you know, anything meaningful just takes time, you know, and then it kind of sneaks up on you. You know, and five years pass or ten. Like I mean, with you, I, I I already blew lots of smoke up your butt in the last conversation. Of you were one of the first people that like inspired me in the the podcast world. You know, and so um, you know, I was like, I was at the time I was a little weird. I was I would like obsessively take notes on like every episode, yours, and there was a couple other ones. I saw you have John Lee Dumas's book over there as well, or his, his notebook or whatever. Um, I'd listen to all of his. You know, and so it's like, okay, where was my mind at, at that point? I was really into helping clients. So I was doing, you know, rolfing and personal training and kind of in blending this movement and manual therapy conversation, which is kind of rare for both of those worlds to really integrate well. Uh, and then I was also interested in how to take that conversation and kind of encapsulate it for masses to be able to consume it and have impact beyond just my office. You know, so if I go back, I mean, the irony is kind of ridiculous, actually. Like, <laughs> like you and John Dumas at the time were major, major inspirations. The fact that you have his notebook thing over there, I haven't seen the notebook, but um, like I haven't like opened it up yet, but uh, that's pretty interesting. That's not an accident either. Very that's, fascinating. That's totally, 
even the timing with you being here, yeah. but that's that's literally sitting prominently. It's not like a book. It's the only it's book sitting I've right seen there, here, actually. You know, it's his Freedom <laughs> Journal, which he wrote about me in it, actually. Oh, okay, and cool. so I just went, I just opened a new one and I started to go through it. And then I saw the story that he, he was using me as an, an example and yeah. how to use the book. And it's just like, that is so fat. It, it, it reinvigorated me. It gave me another reminder of how powerful I am. Mm. You know, because yeah. I was about to go into a new domain. So, yeah, and yeah. how powerful you've always been, you know, and, 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 and it's so something that I, uh, I think that we want big change. And I'm, I'm going to try my best to not sound cliche with any of this because I'm sure they've, people have heard, you know, thousands of self-help people say similar things. Um, but ultimately, I think it's those, those small, steady, consistent shifts that matter. You know, and so it's like the Egyptians building the pyramids. Maybe it was done by aliens or what. I mean, I don't know how it was done right. exactly, but um, assuming it was done by people, my guess is probably nanu, people. Nanu, Yeah. What is this? Nanu, nanu. What is that? This is another reference you don't know, bro. I don't know. <laughs> Ask me about any bone in the body. I'm like, cool, perfect. We can get into it. As soon as you go to like media references, I really get You lost. sound like me with that. <laughs> like, you should see me on the Zoom. Like, how do you, what is this tarnation, you know? I feel the same way, man. I need, that's I need uh, more Robin Williams. In my life. Oh. Mort, Mort, is it Morton Mindy? Oh, Morton yeah. Mindy or whatever. Or whatever, yeah. yeah same or whatever, here, yeah. You know? <laughs> God, Robin, man. You got to watch out. If you get too deep, too smart, there's a, there's a quote from some basketball coach. So you, the, the key to developing a great basketball player is uh, for them to know enough about the game to be great, but not too much to realize that it doesn't matter. You know, and so I think that there's certain people that it's like, you got to watch out with, with going into this human experience thing. Yeah. You know, and not to say that with any like trepidation or, or, or fear, because I don't think ultimately like, like, there's nothing to fear. But it's an interesting thing. Some of the people like, like a Robin Williams, that it's like, wow, like, they're mo- like the beautiful mind. You know, and they get in so far. Where it's like, I think you can start to, to step into some kind of like nihilistic type play. So I think life in some ways, I don't know if this has, have anything to do with movement or anything like that, but it's an interesting balance of maintaining engagement with the game um, and also being able to step back and witness that there is a game happening, but not get overly consumed with either side. That's not in response to a question either. Yeah. No, yeah. I mean, this, what you just said, it, it really leans into, and we're going to come back to the pyramids, by the way. All right. But this really leans All right, into... This leads into <laughs> what's happening with when we're becoming separated from reality, and we see this uptick even with you know with children. What was in Social Dilemma, which yeah. we were talking about, yeah. and the suicide rates, and I think more important, more than ever, we need a sense of grounding. We need a sense of 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 connectedness, mm-hmm. but not in an, in an, in an idealistic way, but like in a real way, you know. Um, but to go back to the the pyramids, so the Egyptians built building the pyramids or aliens, yeah, as we're saying, yeah. Oh, so so within that, it's they're they're bringing the bricks in and carving them out. I mean, who knows how anything happened in the history? But you know, they're bringing bricks in, carving them out, and it probably took freaking centuries to get that thing done. But it's just one brick at a time, one brick at a time, and then eventually you step back, you know, and it's just, you assume that it just happened. It's like no, that was decades or centuries of consistency. You know, it's like the consistent part isn't overly sexy, but just know that if you are making subtle shifts in your world and, you're, and, and they're manageable, they're bite-sized enough that, that, that you can maintain consistency. When someone goes on some massive like fad, super crazy diet, I'm full ketosis or I'm full this, that, whatever. Like, I think I got love for ketosis, I got love for vegan, I got love for carnivore, I got love for all of them. Um, But when someone goes real deep, real fast, the amplitude of the change was very strong, I very rarely have much trust about it, as far as like having any longevity. You know, but the person that just, they just show up, you know, they're on time, they're dependable, they're consistent, you know, and that it's like they like so like when they show up, it's like it's like wow. They every time that person's here, they make the room a little bit better. Like huh, I don't know how it's, oh they 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 brought some you know we noticed they needed water. They brought water. They noticed like oh this person seems stressed out. He's like massaging his shoulder. You know oh he noticed there was trash in the guy. He picks it up. That person gets invited back. You know and so that's like okay cool like that was there was nothing glamorous 
about that person. They just consistently make the room better. You know, and so if you can do that with time, then all of a sudden the matrix starts to expand and you've done well by this person, you've done well by that person, you've done, you know, and it's all of a sudden they start talking about you and that's like, you, you, you fill out this matrix, but you need to show up. Like you need to do the work, you need to support people, you need to live your life in, in a way that's actually like, how can I make this room better? How can I improve this person's life? How can I improve my own life? You know, if you consistently do that, I think inevitably, you know, success, success in air quotes, just inevitably manifests itself. You know, but it's, it's like, for me, and not that I've been and perfect in any, any way, but I'm not like especially stupendous at anything, I would say. Um, but I have been consistent with a few things around like this movement conversation. You know, so I'll consistently sit like a weirdo in interviews. I'll consistently be, you know, barefoot when, we, when we're doing these conversations. I'll consistently, you know, offer to do acro yoga or be able to see some way that I can support your body when we're together. You know, and, and I think that has added up. I'll consistently listen to podcasts that are, you know, supportive to my mind. I'll consistently eat food that's supportive to my biology. You know, and that times five years, I think, is very impactful. Yeah, man, very well said. Um, this, this goes back to the very simplistic quote. And I first heard this from Peter Ragnar. Mm. Have you heard of Peter Ragnar? Yeah, yeah. Man, what the, I think about him on a regular basis, <laughs> too, you know. Um, this, this Viking living in the Rocky Mountains, you know, building his house with his bare hands, Taoist, enlightened, kung fu, weightlifting, raw food eating, like, immortal. <laughs> All right. And by the way, I had him on this show, on the Model House show, uh, many years ago. So make sure to check. We'll put in the show notes for you. Peter Ragnar, legendary, All right? But um, he said, and I know this quote has been around for a long time, but he said, but when he said it, it was like, oh, damn, that's true. By the inch, it's a cinch. By the yard, it's hard. Totally. So it's just those little, we, we try to do too much too quick. And yeah. some of us have a tendency towards it. Yeah. Some of us have a tendency towards everything being perfect before we take that small inch. Yeah. Some of us have a tendency towards balance. Yeah. You know, and each within each of those constructs, there's gifts. But I think that all of us, we all have it in us, you know, but at the end of the day, what you just said is the most logical approach because our our identity to try to change too much is it's incredibly uncomfortable and there's going to be like a snapback effect. You also have to watch out for people that you're, um, I don't know what direction you want this conversation to go because it's kind of veering a little bit away from the movement realm, but I think it's you know relevant stuff. Uh, but watch out for the way that people's perceptions of you will kind of can potentially kind of trap you inside of a container of who they thought you were. You know, and so that's, I think, a really valuable thing as well. It's like sometimes, I think one of the healthiest things a person can do if they are seeking really like major shift in their life and they feel kind of stagnant and they feel kind of stuck and you know, all of those words, I think ultimately you could like Byron Katie it or Eckhart Tolle it and sit on a bench or be in a hardwood floor with cockroaches crawling you that both are two kind of separate stories, Byron's and, and Eckhart's, and all of a sudden have this deep, dark despair that translates into enlightenment in a <laughs> moment. Um, or, you know, you could buy a ticket to Puerto Rico, <laughs> you know, or Austin or, you know, any, any place and change up your physical environment for a span of maybe two weeks, you know, or, you know, whatever. Like I'm going through a process right now where I'm, I'm kind of like minim minimizing my, my material world um, not in any kind of, you know, really spiritual way, just, just, just for, so I'm a little bit more nimble over the winter because I'd like to travel, um, specifically in, in relation to doing some research stuff for, for an upcoming book. Um, you know, but in that process of letting go, purging some of the materials that I had, each material that you have, it harbors a certain level of psychological real estate or bandwidth, weight. You know, and it's like you walk into your house and these materials, at some point you felt a certain way, you went out and you painted this, this, this wall this color. And you went and bought that vase and you went and bought that, you know, those pots, they, all, they made you feel a way, right? So it was kind of like your, your snail shell that you were living in. You're like, this feels fitting. 
Mm. This, fits, this fits me, mm. this identity that I met now at age 23 or 33 or whatever. You know, and then with time, that room starts to you know, form you and kind of keeps you in that place. And I think that's something that I've personally felt uh, is starting to be a little bit more minimalist in my present material world. Um, it's really like lightened up kind of the binds of who I think I am. You know, I'm like, oh, I'm like, I'm not necessarily like LA guy right now because I, I sublet my place. You know, so it's like, where do I live? It's like, well, I'm planning on traveling. I live in Austin sometimes. I live in LA sometimes. You know, it's like, who, like, who am I? It's like, whoa. Some of those material, I'm in Austin, you know, I'm with a different group of people. When I'm traveling, you know, all of a sudden I'm speaking Spanish. You know, it's like, how do I express myself in that language? You know, so each place will form you. You know, and so sometimes if you do want to create change, I think a, a really valuable thing is to, you could be as simple as, you know, maybe change the, the color of your walls or change the, the couch or take the couch out entirely. Um, or literally, you know, go a little bit more major and say like, I'm going to take a trip, you know, and go out and kind of give myself the opportunity to shed the parts of me that maybe I didn't really need. Like they started to be kind of like barnacles. I just didn't know how to shake them off. Uh, and be able to maintain the parts of the ship that I want to that I want to keep and Then you can come back and what may happen and this is why people sometimes have resistance around um, Certain maybe a partner going for a, a trip or maybe going like a burning man or something like that where it's like I hear you come back kind of different You're like will we still be it together? Like that's a storm to enter a relationship like can that relationship bear that weather? You know, but it's like ultimately I think uh, yeah, we can make major change by also looking at our, our environment and not just purely looking between our ears. Mm, incredible, man. Well, I want to talk about more of the tangible things that we can do, yeah. some of the more practical things that we can do, because even changing things in our environment is such a powerful insight just to change up the energy of things. So that is a, a really practical, valuable thing. And, but there's more and we need it right now. So we're gonna do that right after this quick break. So sit tight, we'll be right back. Hey everybody, with all of the things that we're exposed to today, the environmental toxicity, the weird stuff showing up in our food supply, we've gotta do things to really support our immune system. Our immune system is really running the show on so many different levels to keep us healthy. And one of the most powerful things for supporting a healthy immune system is making sure that we're getting in some immunomodulators. So what does that mean? These are substances that can help to elevate our immune system in response to things that might be trying to creep their way into our body, into our cells, and defend us against those things. But it can also bring the immune system back down, calm it down if things are running too hot, AKA we're dealing with some autoimmunity. We need things that are intelligent. Many drugs out there that are pushed through pharmaceutical companies, though they mean well, they push your immune system in one direction and that can really mess things up on the back end, you know, leading to AKA side effects. So to avoid that, getting some natural immunoregulators are gonna be a powerful thing you add into your life. How I do that, and it's been a consistent basis pretty much every single day, I've been using every day, and even had it this morning, the incredible mushroom elixirs from Four Sigmatic. So head over to foursigmatic.com forward slash model. So that's F-O-U-R-S-I-G-M-A-T-I-C.com forward slash model and you're gonna get 10% off all these amazing superfood elixirs. My favorite is the chaga, and chaga's been clinically shown to increase your NK cell activity, so your natural killer cells, over 300%. It's also the most powerful antioxidant that we've ever seen in the history of humanity that humans actually consume. Powerful antioxidant, powerful anti-cancer, powerful immune system regulator. So that's what I use in the morning. I'll get some chaga, and sometimes I'll have it straight, or I'll blend it with some you know, hot water, some healthy fat. So this could be some ghee, this could be some grass-fed butter, this could be some coconut oil, some MCT oil, things like that. A little bit of cinnamon, maybe some other fun medicinal herbs you could throw in there. But this has been the daily thing that I've done, and I highly recommend you start doing the same thing. They also have the mushroom coffees, and my wife is a big fan of these. And so the mushroom coffee mix has cordyceps and chaga in there. And today she ran out. She was like, where's my, where's my coffee? You know, she's not even, ever since we've been together, she hasn't been a coffee drinker, but this has been her daily thing. She loves the way it makes her feel. And she doesn't get some weird kind of caffeine spike and crash as well. So head over and check them out. 
foursigmatic.com forward slash model for 10% off. Now back to the show. All right, we're back and we're talking with Aaron Alexander, the author of The Align Method. And before the break, we're talking about the value and power in simply changing our environment, like physically getting out, going somewhere else to change the energy, to change our exposure, to change the things that shape our identity. And also potentially making changes just within the construct of our own home, within our own rooms, just to change up the energy, to change the vibe, especially if you're feeling stagnant or uncomfortable or, 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 or things are kind of jagged and irritating. And true story, yesterday, my wife, so she went on a, on a, on a date with her friend, shout out to Kenyatta. They went on a date to the container store? Do you know about this store? No. They were so giddy. Store. I'm just like, what is the big deal? Contain- I'm thinking like the, shipping container, like the ones you live in. It's obviously not that unimaginable. I, I don't know what to think, man. Yeah. It's like, they were, they were so amped about it, I, I just didn't understand. But then she came back, you know, she, she came back with her bounty. And basically, it's a, it's a store that has all these different containers. That's why it's called the container store. Oh. So all these different containers, but n- outside the realm of what you would think. There's like containers for like putting your spices together. Like when you saw when I opened like my Like a Tupperware cabinet, party. But my mom used to tell me that they were having a Tupperware party, but sometimes there weren't Tupperware parties. I was, <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? I feel like it's a perfect front for It was for like some weird oils and stuff. <laughs> but anyways, let's not, let's not dig into that back. But you saw when I opened my cabinet over there, how beautiful and arranged it is. Mm. It was not like that two days oh, ago. Wow. Okay. Wow. She got all of these things, and yesterday she just took the time and implemented all these different containers throughout the kitchen. And it, it gave, she has been so happy today. She, came, she woke up just dropping ideas. She came and have a, she, she has never had a sit down with me. She, came, she sat me down like, I'm her, you know, like I'm her child. She sat in the chair, she sat in the, a chair that was higher than me, sat me down. She started talking to me about what I should be doing. Wow. And I'm just like, is this real? But it's because of getting that, that change, that, that new dynamic, that new order yep. for herself and kind of changing the energy and things that have been, she, she told me this, it's been in her mind since the second day we moved here. Mm-hmm. And she did it and it kind of opened up a new, a new space mm-hmm. in her mind. Yep. So changing the space outside of us can change the spaces and the recesses in our mind. And then that continues into a more uh, like musculoskeletal biological conversation where you can have disorganization within your physical body and that will impact not only the, the way that you, you regulate yourself at a cellular level, but also the way that you, uh, that trickles into the way that you feel and the way that you move, and perhaps the likelihood for injury, or the likelihood for success. You know, so in that, the organization of that cupboard, you know, before it looked perhaps more like, like an adhesion, which is a little bit irregular, and almost kind of more like scar tissue-esque. You know, and then all of a sudden we start to align the cupboard, you know, and from the outside looking in, you're like, man, I feel so organized. Like I feel like, ugh, before I had this kind of this chaos, this disarray happening in that corner of the house. And it was just, I couldn't really grasp it. It felt dis- almost like disassociated. It was too much to process. Mm. Now all of a sudden I come into alignment with that and it's like, oh, I can take a breath. You know, when you see that literally in the physical body, in places where there's adhesions, it, it, it's, it's like this misaligned chaos. You know, and so, and as well, places like say, say in the spine, People that will have back pain in, you know, say you have like low back or thoracic pi- spine pain or, you know, if there's some place in the back that kind of just like, oh, that doesn't feel really great back there. You'll eventually start to literally disconnect or disassociate from that place if you can't find solution for it. And so now all of a sudden you feel disembodied, disassociated, disconnected from your, your, your central freaking nervous system. So if you would try to draw a picture of that place of chaos within your spine, it would be much more challenging for you to actually come up and have a, 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 a succinct, clear image of that place in you. There's not a lot of places that are more valuable than your central nervous system. 
<laughs> and for you to feel completely disconnected from the main channel of information that's surging through your body to perceive and interact with the world all day long, probably a big deal. You know, and so the way that the way that the way that the cabinet in your in your house when it comes into organization, now in your mind you can create a clear picture of that place. You know where the oregano is, you know where the pepper is, you know where the salt is, you know, and so in your spine, in your ribs, in your diaphragm, in your feet, it's a similar thing where when you come into that place of organization, then all of a sudden you have relationship. Um, you know, and so what we're talking about in relation to environment, we are passively tuning our bodies all day long based off of the formation of our environment. You know, so there's a, a, um, a book called Muscles and Meridians by Philip Beach, and I borrowed the language of uh, postures of repose from him in, in my book, The Align Method. And the postures of repose are all about uh, what any hunter-gatherer, ancestral, third world, like all of those words, slash healthy person today. If you talk to most dancers, yogis, you know, people that are just like, kind of like their thing is being in their body, you will notice that they'll squat regularly. You'll notice that when they sit on a chair, they're probably not gonna sit on a chair like, you know, like most, you know, the standard American diet, stereotypical Americans would kind of like loaf in the chair. They're probably gonna kind of sit more like a kid. You know, so they might twist over to the side a little bit, and then they might change positions a little bit, then maybe they're facing backwards on the chair for a little bit. You know, and what they're naturally doing with that is like, oh, that was a, that was a massage. Every time I press my body up against something, I'm literally moving lymphatic fluid, I'm moving blood, and I'm starting to reorient that connective tissue. I'm bringing electricity to that tissue through contact. And so we live in a world where we're living kind of like, you know, we're wearing like coffinous, desensitizing shoes all day, for example. You know, so your shoes have, you know, there's 26 bones and 33 joints and 7,000 nerve endings, and there's a lot of flippant information surging through your feet. Perhaps why there's a whole modality called reflexology that's all about poking at specific spots to create impact on the rest of your body. You know, and so our shoes are essentially the opposite of reflexology, where it's like, let's just dumb down this way more complex than anything NASA's ever created instrument called the bottom of our feet by allowing it to atrophy in these pads for our whole entire life. You know, and so something that a person could do would be start to you know, bring a little bit more intelligence and organization and integration into their body by increasing the level of feedback and the way that they could, I know I'm kind of going a bit like meta out there, but coming back into like what we can do, uh, something very simple would just be bringing yourself in greater contact with your environment uh, by spending, you know, in my book I recommend at least 30 minutes a day, just being on the ground. You know, for most people, hopefully listening, they're like, oh, dude, done. I'm, not, I'm already like two hours. You know, I'll do a yoga class. That's a whole hour. You know, maybe I, I, I drink tea or coffee or whatever in the morning and I have like a low coffee table and I kind of sit down on a raised cushion. You know, as I'm going through that motion, it acts as a passive massage. Uh, it's also mobilizing my ankles, my knees, my hips, my pelvic floor. It's circulating cerebral spinal fluid and getting my central nervous system online. So it, just that passive action of getting all the way down, all the way up, starts to kind of unkink some of those hoses throughout your body. Mm, so good, 30 minutes a day. That's my low grade re rec recommendation for like the non ground sitting American. Yeah. But hopefully most people listening to this are already like, oh, I'm already past that. And that doesn't mean that you need to be, you can sit on a chair like you're on the ground. You can sit on your couch like you're on the ground. I just want you to get out of that same repetitive position that your teachers put you in ever since kindergarten. You know, I was always like weird, freakish, giraffe, like un or uncoordinated body as a young person. And so, you know, you like freaking poor kid, like thinking back to that, you know, and I'm breathing through my mouth and my, you know, my upper palate's all collapsed in. We can have a whole conversation around nose breathing, and, you know, the value of that, put a whole chapter in the book about it because it's, it's important, um, you know, but coming in through there, and being placed from what would be the potential for my body to, to grow and orient to you know, the world around me. 
you know, and be able to circulate all my fluids and kind of just sending all this information in for me to, to be able to adapt to. That's just taking a, a walk barefoot in your backyard for a minute. Your body, your brain goes into this electrical storm of <laughs> information. You come alive, right? So instead of that, it's, okay, cool, like pipe down, you know, no, no speaking, teacher's talking. You know, let's keep you still. If you're, if you're kind of fidgeting a little bit too much, we have some medication for that, it's okay. You know, no problem. You know, just like have you, okay, now, now, now don't even think about uh, creating any kind of mechanical advantage with your spine and your hips. You know, let's not even talk about that because the teacher doesn't know about that because the teacher was never taught about that because it's not a part of our cultural model of education. You know, so you go in and you say, okay, cool, I'll just kind of hunch over here and now all of a sudden I'm, I'm literally at a mechanical disadvantage. I'm training disadvantage, handicap into my body each day while I'm being a good boy, sitting in place, hunching forward into this, what we talked about before, kind of like a little bit more, um, you know, literally anatomically depressed position. I kind of go into this collapse. Now I'm in that position for, you know, 12 years and I come out and I want to be a strong, confident, you know, like autonomous, like, man, like I feel at home in my body. Like I feel, I feel like I can do anything. It's really hard to feel like you can do anything when you come from a whole decade of training your body into a disadvantageous position. You know, what, what just came up for me, and I just wrote it down, is the, the, the training that's taking place, whether we realize it or not, and how our environment, the people around us, you said something earlier and you was like, I don't, I know that this is getting into a different domain, but the people around us, when you just mentioned the teacher, when you mentioned that specifically, these are people who influence our movement, right? But she's operating in a system that influences our movement. And so number one is becoming aware of them. And we know some wonderful people who are, have been doing work in this space, like uh, Kelly Starrett has yeah. been on the show, really good friend. The Ford for uh, my book. Awesome, yeah. yeah. But what he's done is they've got standing desk at their kids' school, which was the first school to do that. And it's a step in the right direction, of course, like just being able to move, to sit if you want to, just to be able to move around a bit. Yeah. Because we are literally indoctrinating our children to literally kind of mold themselves, not just physically, but like you just mentioned, it, it affects our psychology, the way that we're positioned. So yeah. uh, this is, the reason I'm bringing this up is that right now, when all of this is going on, this is also, it's not just our opportunity to assess our movement practices. It's not just our opportunity to assess our healthcare system. It's our opportunity to assess our education system. Yeah. You know, so it's really profound for you to bring that up. And uh, one other thing is uh, when we talked about the environment and there's this wonderful statement that your inner world is a direct reflection of your outer world. Really? And uh, I had Shalene on the show, Shalene Johnson, and she brought up some really fascinating data on how clutter affected people's food choices, mm -hmm. how clutter affected folks' tendency towards cravings and things like that. It's just like, some of these things are really profound, but we are, we're never taught these things. We never think well, about them. Well, you need to, to, I mean, if you feel out of control, you're probably gonna look for some type of, uh, you know, short-lived, kindling-esque, uh, nutrient rich type food like you want the sugar and you want the salt and you want the fat and you want all the things whereas if you're in a place where it's like I feel pretty calm you're like oh, might be good for a fast <laughs> you know, it's like, I feel like I'm good for you know I could be good for the week it's like okay cool you, you probably your body's not gonna get those internal signals that you need to get something in quick you know, and so, but then once again, there's like, there is, I think, another conversation of what is your perception of organization? Because I think that sometimes people can be more of like a type A personality type place where they are internally having, you know, they're, they're breaking down internally. And then you go into their home and it's like perfectly spick and span. And everything's organized and labeled and titled. So from the outside looking in, you could look at that person and be like, oh, they're winning. Mm -hmm. Like, wow. But in fact, they're all tied up in knots and they're ready to explode. 
and they're reaching for some semblance of control anywhere they can find it, and it ends up translating to like becoming addicted to the container store. <laughs> Not putting that on anything in relation. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm sure here it's this place seems like a really great balance actually of like, it's great but it's not like too perfect. Like that's where the perfection is. I think. Yeah. You know, sometimes when you go on. past houses where Spot you're like, on. you're like, feels like they might be having some, you know, strange things in their closet. <laughs> you know, like when you go, it's like it's a little too perfect. We literally, I wrote, I've got handwritten signs. That's great. That's <laughs> 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 That's legit. You want to be because because there's there is something to developing your capacity for tolerance and acceptance, you know, and and ultimately it's like I think it's it all this does wind back into like what is your story and narrative of the world, you know. So you start to but you can start to come in and pull the toggles of your story by just augmenting what's happening on the outside. So it comes back to that quote, like your internal world's a direct reflection of your, outer, your external world, and vice versa. There's, it's like chicken or the egg, it's like, I don't know. They're just, they're, they're just the same, it's just interconnected. So if you wanted to create change in your life, you know, do anything. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> because, it's, you know, and, and if you read, you know, Sleep Smarter, you might think, oh, like, the strongest spoke on the wheel is sleep, nothing else matters. If you read the Align Method, you might be like, oh, it's all movement, you're not moving right, you gotta make it to be a part of your life, who you are. You know, if you read somebody else's psych, Bessel van der Kalk, you know, you might be, oh, it's in your mind. You know, and it's like, ultimately, it's like, no, spoke, 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 all tied back into the same hub, pull on any one of those, and you'll impact the whole. So it's like, what's the best thing, like, the, the best move is your next move. Just do something. Perfect. Perfect. <laughs> Listen, uh, I've, I've got actually, I've got one more question. Yeah, yeah. Just as a takeaway for everybody, in this time in human history where we are so deprived of movement right now, you know, for many people, of course, their, their gym was their therapy. For many people, um, just even fear around going outside, just the stress of going outdoors a lot mm -hmm. of times, yeah. you know, just, just to see the atmosphere that might be around many folks throughout the country, throughout the world really, just yeah. even stepping foot outside their door. What are some takeaway things, just maybe three things, you've already given, work on, make it a target to spend 30 minutes on the ground each day. What are two other things that folks can do right now to, so, to really address this? So first, I'll go granular bullet points, uh, and then the first thing is coming back to, to language and starting from a place of, um, it's not that I'm, that we're living in a world that is deprived of movement. It's that we're living in a world where we're choosing convenience. So it's like, you're empowered. <laughs> you know, so start from the place of like, I'm not deprived of anything. Like I've like, culturally, the zeitgeist has chosen convenience to its own detriment, I think. You know, so first come to a place of like, okay, I'm responsible. Like, cool, all right. I'm not, there's nothing scarce about this. There's nothing, it's like, it's, it's, it's not there. It's like, no, no, it's there. We're just choosing. So first of all, you're responsible, you know, and then from there, um, I would say a really simple thing that um, people could add into their daily worlds, which is like one of, the, one of the principles that we break down is just the value of getting your arms up over your head each day. So you're just getting like a pull-up bar in your house. Like, please, if you don't already have a pull-up bar, get a pull-up bar in your house. Uh, and not even, I don't even care if you ever do a pull-up. A lot of girls can't do a pull-up. It's great, no problem. They're a lot better rock climbers typically because they, they're forced to use their lower body in order to, to climb. Whereas guys that can grunt through and muscle through and use their upper bodies, they end up lacking form. You know, so I don't even care if you can do a pull-up. What I care about is that you get your arms up over your head and you just spend a little bit of time each day. In the book, I recommend 90 seconds total. So that could be like 15 seconds, six times or whatever. Uh, hanging from that position. And you could think of it as, as you're doing that, you're literally restructuring the shape of your shoulder girdle, which a common tendency is to go into impingement if you're always hunching forward, cell phoning, carpal tunneling yourself, and computering, and chairs, and all that. So just that simple practice of just, oh, like get long, create that space in there, hang for a total of 60, 90 seconds. Uh, whatever you'll do is what I want you to do. Uh, if what you'll do is 10 seconds, 10 seconds. Like whatever you'll do, whatever bite is good for you. Um, you know, and, and within that, uh, literally think of it as like, visualize yourself, it's like, Think, imagine if you had a, a wet blanket and you left the wet blanket kind of like crumpled up 
and it would start to kind of like fester and kind of get moldy and get all gross. And you're like, oh, we might have to throw that blanket out. Like that's not going to work. You know, that's your lungs and your ribs and your intercostals and all this precious tissue if it's not being breathed and expanded and contracted with regularity. When you're doing that, oh, that opening up, imagine what you're doing is it's like you're taking that wet blanket and you're exposing it to the sun and you're kind of lifting it out and kind of letting that air blow through it. Now all of a sudden that blanket's starting to heal. You know, and so by having that relationship of your shoulder girdle and your neck and your ribs and all that in a position that's you know most aligned, balanced, stacked, a really simple way to do that, like a shotgun approach, is just spend some time hanging each day. Uh, another bullet point that would be supportive is recognizing we were talking about you know your your central nervous system, you know, and gaining a relationship with your spine and you know your neck and uh, you know your whole body really. Um, but a continuation of your central nervous system is your eyeballs. You know, so if you are staring into screens all day long, uh, that's literally putting your nervous system, your autonomic nervous system, which I would say is a misnomer because your autonomic nervous system is continually responding to your environment that you're consciously choosing. So when you are staring in that myopic vision, what do you do if you are in that fight flight state? What do you do if a lion comes into the room right now? You go, you focus in on it, right? Now we make action. So now we go in and we go through that whole, you know, the, the, the adrenaline and the cortisol and all those things, come online, get you ready to, to move, and then what do your eyes do once you've defeated the lion or made it away or go into like, you're over the, you're in the savannah and you're kind of just like, oh, you're taking it. You're probably not focusing in on a lion anymore. You're probably just kind of spacing out and saying like, oh, man, that was crazy. Right, so your eyes, the continuation of your brain, your central nervous system, are continually feeding information back into your physiology, saying, okay, are we focused? Are we executive function? Fight, flight, make it happen? Or are we more in that panoramic vision where it's a, a calming, soothing, rest, digest, repair type state? So if you're staring into your phone all day uh, and you're wondering why it's hard for you to, to wind down and go to sleep at night, well, you're essentially sending the signal to your brain, especially if you're doing that right before you're going to bed. Think of it as like, you know, you're, you're sending the signal to your brain that it's time to wake up. It's time to go into action. It's time to move. It's not time to be still. And so if you want to be calm, you're feeling stressed out, say before, and this I'll, I'll just compound one little like variable stack. Uh, if you're stressed out, you're going into a, a, a date with somebody you're nervous about or a business thing or anything of the sort, uh, and you're feeling like, oh my God, like my, you know, my shoulders are clenched up and I feel like I'm clenching my jaw and I'm just like, oh, I'm like panicking. Uh, emphasize calming your eyes. Take the whole room in. You know, so when you walk in, utilize that panoramic vision by really feeling the whole room. You know, e you could even visualize like, okay, what's, this, what's the room feel like behind me? Do I have a memory of what's going on back there? Right? Like, can I, can I kind of feel the people behind me? Can I really take, and anybody that's ever gone uh, bow hunting, which I don't know people's beliefs around that, but whatever. The, the experience of hunting is really fascinating to have. Even if you don't ever actually uh, kill an animal, just the experience of stalking an animal is one of the most unbelievable experiences because you, your senses turn on in a way that will never happen in a Whole Foods, right? Unless it was like there was some sniper came in and all of a sudden, and then all of a sudden, poof, you're on, right? You know, so when you're out there hunting, you're hearing every little stick, every little twig breaking, wind, you're noticing the directionality of the wind because that's going to determine the smell from me. You're taking distances. Okay, cool, that's 20 yards, 30 yards, 40 yards, 50 yards. You know, so your, the, the, your physical, environmental, internal map of what's happening goes and expands out and you become the forest. So what is that at a neurological level? It's you coming alive. <laughs> it's you engaging with your world, right? Where if you're in a place where we have these coffin shoes and these, you know, it's these, the, Tony Robbins has a thing as if you have like your box lunch and then you get in your box and you drive to the box and it's like all these boxes when you're just a bunch of circles and spirals. You know, it's like there's a, there's a certain level of conflict there. You know, and so something that people can do is start to, you know, just 
by you engaging with your environment, you come alive. And if you're feeling stressed out, bullet points, uh, relax the eyes and emphasize the exhalation. Don't take a deep breath. Emphasize the exhalation. When somebody says, you're freaking out, take a deep breath. Don't listen to them. Emphasize the exhalation. And when you're emphasizing that exhalation, you're engaging more of that calming, parasympathetic, rest, digest. People can do it now. I was already doing it. <laughs> I could feel Wonderful, it. man. <laughs> Aaron, you're, you're amazing, man. Can you let everybody know where they can check out your podcast, get more information? Yeah. Um, well, so we just did a, a really beautiful podcast on Align Podcast, which is one that I've hosted for the last five and change years, which was predominantly inspired by you in large part. So I appreciate that. Um, so people can jump over and listen to the, essentially the continuation of this conversation. If they found this interesting, there's more on the other side. Um, I'll release this whenever, you know, I'm sure we'll like co-release or whatever. Um, and then people can check out the Align Method book if they want to learn more. And that's in, you know, Amazon's probably where most people get it, but it's in all the targets and the, you know, the Barnes and Nobles and, and that. I don't even know if, is, do bookstores? Are they happening? Is that a thing? Is I don't. That I, literally don't I literally don't. I literally don't. I literally don't know. I mean, you can order digitally, I guess. It's a, it's a different world out there, man. Yeah. It's a different world. Yeah. So Align Method, um, and you know, there's a lot of cool stuff. If you just go to AlignPodcast.com, we have um, you know a six week online program that's kind of like the living, breathing continuation of the actual steps from the Align Method. Um, but if you like books, that's that. If you like audio, Align Podcast. Align Method also has an audio book. So I think that's a great starting point. Awesome. Appreciate you, brother. Seriously, um, just your story and you're a great example of what is possible of becoming interested in something, you know, and like you said earlier, like you, you found a couple of things that you repeatedly did and you ended up becoming world class at them, you know, so you were true leader right now and I, I i'm so grateful to have you on truly because movement is something that we all need but i think it can be looked over and i love the reference point that you gave of there's not a deprivation of movement the movement is all around us it's available it's in us yeah it's just becoming aware of it so thank yeah. you so much brother appreciate thank you that. i appreciate it everybody thank you so much for tuning into the show today i hope you got a lot of value out of this and Listen, one of the biggest takeaways for me is a reiteration of how important it is to understand and really self-assess. Just take a look at what, what our identity is. How do we see ourselves? Because the way that we perceive ourselves is going to determine the actions that we take. And so if we can begin to see ourselves as somebody who enjoys movement, as we begin to see ourselves as somebody who sees the world through the lens of play and creativity. We, it's so crazy. When I talk with Aaron, I start realizing stuff that I didn't realize before, you know? We, we saw a bunch of houses or different places to move and nothing really felt right. And it's a feeling thing, you know? We can logically talk ourselves into things, but it's because we were looking for a space of, of play, a space that accommodates the way that we live, the way that we think, the way that we move. And regardless of what type of space, even if we're living in a small apartment, because that's what we lived in when, when I first met my wife, the way that things were structured within that space allowed for play. You know, it's so funny. We literally put a tent. My son had a Spider-Man tent. We put the tent up in the middle of the living room of my, my tiny apartment in Ferguson, Missouri. You know what I mean? So it's, it's Shifting our identity first, becoming the type of person that, you know, because I've said this statement before, but health isn't something that you chase after. It's something you attract to you by the person you become. So self-assess and do that as your homework first. You know, look at how do you see yourself and start to speak to yourself a little bit differently. Start to identify yourself as somebody who does fill in the blank, spends 30 minutes a day on the ground. All right, and it's the small things. We don't have to try to transform the entire movement paradigm right now for you, but just adding in more nutritious movement here and there, getting in more inputs is incredibly valuable right now, not just for our physical health, but the way that we're relating to the rest of the world, the way that we're relating to each other. So it's very, very important. 
I appreciate you so much for tuning into the show today. If you got a lot of value out of this, please share this out with your friends and family on social media. You can tag me, I'm at Sean Model, and tag Aaron at Align Podcast. Align Podcast, and let us know what you thought about the episode. I appreciate you guys so very much. We've got some epic, absolutely epic shows coming your way very soon. Take care, have an amazing day, and I'll talk with you soon. How valuable all of those painful experiences are. And we hear that over and over again from everyone, you know, that uh, it's not the successes that make you, it's the failures or the difficult times.